Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are and whatever time zone you're in on our amazing planet. I just looked and I saw what uh, this uh, podcast. podcast is about to be about. Yes. And it's on working on your relationship doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And we were going to write a book with that title because our first book was working on yourself doesn't work. But people thought working on your relationship doesn't work wasn't a good title. Well, it was in the era when they were saying negativity in a title right. uh, is bad news. Right, right, so right. we did do how to create a magical relationship. As, and as, as in opposition to, we were going to do working on your relationship doesn't work. And then we did how to create a magical relationship. Well, I guess it, I guess we it changed worked. the title a lot. Yeah, we did change the title a lot. It worked because we, we got the gold medal for the Nautilus Book Awards. Correct. So the book hey, of the year yeah. for men, women, and relationships. So uh, it worked. However, it is really true. Working on your relationship doesn't, doesn't work. work. And, and part of why it doesn't work is if you're working on your relationship, you're trying to change or fix yourself or your partner. So it really is an extension of working on yourself. Right. Anyway, we've got some guests today and we'll talk to them and we'll include our, I don't know if you call it philosophy, but our way of our seeing approach. our approach. Okay, to relationships. If this is your first time with us, I'm Ariel. I'm Shia, and well, we do finish each other's sentences. Yes, and welcome to being here. Yes. You know, just before we got here, uh, Ariel said to me, uh, I'd like you to, and I said, okay, I'll take it downstairs. Because we have an easel up here that was being used for one project or another, and it's no longer needed, but she never got the words out. It's uh, been leaning against the wall for months, actually. Uh, we moved it over, got it ready to go downstairs. It never made the trip down to the basement. When you're in sync with yourself and in sync with each other, uh, communication happens. When you're out of sync, communication happens also. It's yes. just a lot more ragged. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And somebody's, <laughs> somebody else is always wrong. That's true. That's right. You know, the, the real key to relationship. Being truly, kind to yourself. Truly, truly, yes. But listen. <gasps> yes. Yes. If, like, for instance, when I pause and you said being kind to yourself, yes. And then I say, listen, yes. It's so important, both. I'm not sure one is more important than the other. Well, without listening, it's really difficult to be kind to yourself. Because you'll probably listen to the voice in your head that finds fault with you all the time. <laughs> that is true, that old recording. So when we talk about listening, we're talking about not passing what's being said through what you already know or believe to be true. So it's about hearing what's being said from the point of view that the speaker is accurate in what they're saying. Uh, it's not like, well, in other words, he's saying, no, it's in the words that are being used. You just have to let them in and see how it falls in you, how you let the communication or message come into you without agreeing with it or disagreeing with it or thinking you already know this stuff called listening. I like that. Anyway, it's all about being here for the moment. Mm. And the moment really is all there is except the illusion of a future and a past. You know, Sean and I have been together for a long time, it'll it will be married for forty years coming up in September. <coughs> Excuse me, sixteenth. Yeah, September sixteenth. Forty years. Wow. Wow. And so there are times we talk clearly about subjects we've talked about before. Yeah, uh, for many, on this, many years on this podcast, we're we're moving up on seventeen years. So clearly, we've talked about listening multiple times. But when you're here, the content of what is being said comes in newly. So as Shah was talking just now, it wasn't about, okay, here we go again. 
I'll wait till this is over. I'm going to put myself on pause until he's done. And then I can launch to whatever my topic is. That's not listening. I just flashed on, you know, actors who do a long running Broadway show. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to hear. They know what the lines are that are coming. Absolutely. But they if if it wants to be a moving, stellar performance, they have to operate like what's coming is new to them, not as a act. It's as a they have to really hear what's coming at them newly. And you never really know if you're really here. Uh, life takes these amazing, unexpected turns. And uh, it's sweet. Speaking of sweet, let's take our first guest. Yes, please. All right, Zoe. Welcome to being here. Tell people where you're zooming in from. Hi, um, I'm zooming in from Newburgh, New York. And I'm Newburgh, what are you doing in Newburgh, New York? <laughs> my my boyfriend and I took a trip. Um, we're, we're just enjoying a little vacation here. It's a really sweet little town near, it's about an hour and a half uh, north of New York City, mm -hmm. um, and half where I live. And yeah, we're just enjoying it. So yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I just loved hearing the intro. I I read uh you've got two books on relationship. You got um how to have a magical relationship and how, how to create get... a magical relationship and how to have a match made in heaven. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember reading them both. Um it's been a while, but they're so awesome. And um I, I love the topic. I've been I've just been really enjoying this trip with my my boyfriend and our it's a newer relationship and it's really sweet. <laughs> um I I I loved also what you were saying about listening and being kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I find uh it's sometimes very, it can be intense for me to just feel how much this amazing man loves me <laughs> and, and just like take that in and let it and relax. I have a question. It, uh, it, clearly you're staying at either a, a Airbnb or a hotel or someplace. It's not your home. Is your boyfriend there with you or is he out and about? He's, he's in the other room. Yeah. There's like a, yeah, he, I'm in the little bedroom area and he's in the living room. Can he hear you? Um, he probably can. <laughs> he might be listening to music or something, but I bet he can. <clears throat> Cause I've noticed something about you. I, you know, uh, you work for us part-time. I know you're a school teacher and you work for us part-time, but I've noticed that when he's in your apartment, even though you haven't told me he's there, you get careful. So as you're talking today, there's so, so here's the thing. You just nodded and smiled, <laughs> but this is an audio. <laughs> so you have to use your I know audio he voice. may hear you, but you have to use your voice. It's true. No, it's true. I feel it. I feel myself trying to do it right, trying to not make mistakes I've done in the past. Well, well slow down. Let's stop right there. I love you. Because that's perfect. Now, look, if he loves you the way you are, then that's the way you are, not the way you think you're supposed to be. Right. <laughs> See, if you can't be you in your own apartment or home or in this hotel room, if you have to do it right, then your relationship is in very serious danger. Mm. Because yeah. you're always under stress that way. There's there's no allowing yourself to be loved for who you are, not the image that you're trying to project. And look, Marilyn Monroe dyed her hair. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. Really? She started out as a redhead. I saw <laughs> a little thought on YouTube about her, and she wasn't at all Marilyn at first. Wow. 
So but you, if you're trying to be like that image you have of what sensuous, sexy, beautiful is, then you'll reject your own beautiful mm. being. I want to go back to what you said, because it's so important for everyone. You said, I don't want to make the mistakes I made before. Mm -hmm. so there's two ways to look at this. First of all, I think we should talk about the three principles of instantaneous transformation, because anything you don't want, don't like judged, like about yourself, you're destined to repeat. Yeah. It, it dominates you. So you're not then being simply with your boyfriend. You are being with your boyfriend and you are monitoring how you're being. So you're you're there's a. A you're, mask you're between not, you. You're not being who you don't want to be. So who you're being is determined by some past, quote, failure from your point of view, rather <laughs> than allowing yourself to discover how you are in the current moment. It's a little bit like, like don't get angry, don't get angry, don't get it, until it builds up like a dam and the water bursts through and then what pops out is something that is fueled by anger what you resist you perpetuate second thing is you can only be exactly as you are in any given moment zoe so that means you could have only been the way you were in any past moment so you haven't done it wrong the past just had to be the way it was like it don't like it it doesn't matter think you ought to have done things differently doesn't matter you could have only done exactly what you did in every moment of your life, right up until this one, period. <laughs> Third pin principles, anything you see without judging completes itself. So let's say in a past relationship, you got needy or you made yourself small. And if you just see it, it's over. And the other thing is, I just want to make this suggestion. What if you didn't make any mistakes in your past? What What if everything led you to Austin and Austin <laughs> to you? Oh, my God. We said his name. I know you've been <laughs> going boyfriend, 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 but like, that may be part of your careful. Right. Oh, I did, <laughs> didn't even notice that. Um, that's just so cool. I love it. Well, because look at this. Isn't this relationship far better than the last one or the one before? Yes. If you hadn't made those, quote, mistakes, you might still be with those people. Right. <laughs> it's true. Uh, and this relationship could never have been born because you had been encumbered by one that wasn't working, but you thought you needed. Because, you know, every girl needs a relationship. Right. Right. Uh, you know, the other thing uh, about that, too, is if I look back at it's a long time ago when mm -hmm. I was dating people prior to Shia, but I came in with all the same habits and ways of being with him. And if being myself as I was with these other people was a deal breaker we would have broken up long long time ago we we allowed ourselves to be ourselves from the beginning and, and then anything that was a habit that was corrosive to the quality of our relationship we discovered was not worth keeping because the relationship was more important mm -hmm. how cool I love that. The other thing is this. If Ariel can't be Ariel around me, if she has to behave herself around me, then our relationship is false. You see? But there's yeah. an authenticity that happens in being the natural that you are rather than the mm, illusional that you think you should be. Look, all there is, Zoe, is the current moment. The past and future are an illusion. <laughs> they never get here. See, the future never gets here. It's always out there in the future. Only the current moment is here. And the past, well, that's 
a memory trace at best. So what you have is this moment of you. Why not enjoy it? Mm. Okay, being this moment, because you can't, you have no control over it anyway. <laughs> That's so true. Anywhere other than Newburgh, New York right now. Too late. No. <laughs> okay. so, right. so why not enjoy this moment? Now, why, working on your relationship, let's talk about that for a second. Okay. See, if you have a schematic or an idea based in a cultural download of what a good relationship looks like, <laughs> then you will try to manipulate yourself and your partner into having that, quote, good relationship. But it, it's all based on the cultural idea of what a good relationship looks like. So, yeah. you know, when I got together with Ariel, everybody in her family told her not to marry me. <laughs> because of an age difference, aside from other things, like I rode a motorcycle. Mm. Um, that aside, if you're trying to, in, in this country, in the United States, more than 50% of the marriages that make it to marriage get divorced. Wow. That doesn't say anything about the relationships that never got to marriage, which is much more than the ones that do. Mm -hmm. Relationship really doesn't have a, a good chance if the model you're using for a relationship is what you've learned off the television. <laughs> yeah. Let's just go back to working on yourself doesn't work. The, the primary building block for relationship. Because I, I know in, we haven't done a relationship-themed podcast in a long time. I imagine years ago I gave this example, but it's different now. Shai and I were dating. We were not yet engaged. And I remember that I was holding back something from him. And we were at his apartment on 2nd Avenue. We were in bed. And I said, I, I have something that I need to tell you, I'd been withholding it for a while because I thought it was uh, a bad thing. You're going to laugh because it's pretty funny. Uh, okay. I said to him, I, I think I'm afraid that I've been using you because I like to ride on your motorcycle. <laughs> he looked me in the eye and he said, I don't see you up here in bed with my motorcycle. <laughs> and it popped, but it was something that I'd held on to for a couple of weeks because I had the thought. I thought it was a bad thing. I was afraid to share it. I, I judged it. I judged myself, all this stuff. Fast forward 40, almost 42 years. Yeah. We dated. And I realized last night that I had a, a thought about how a fishing trip we're going on and and the length of it and how long do you know do I really want to go for one week or two and I was trying to figure it out and it was a similar mindset and dynamic so I just shared it with Shia and he he came back with at the time he's like this it's not something you need to figure out tonight, which was true. And then this morning, he he just had a perspective that just released me from the concern. But if you think you're going to get over having, quote, private thoughts that you think are silly and worth withholding, it may never happen. It's 40 some years later, and I still have those thoughts that I think I need to figure out on my own. And I've gotten into the habit of sharing them because all it does is make our relationship easier and life easier. Well, you know, Zoe, there's another thing here. That's your self-image. Mm. What, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I mean by that. See, I look at my self-image. I look at who I am these days and I look at 
who I think I am from the story of my life. And in the story of my life, I'm not a very successful person. You know, I'm not very capable in the story of my life. But what I notice when I look and see how I experience living, I am not at all like, like that inept being my thoughts tell me I am. And I believe, if I'm not too badly mistaken, that you have very similar thoughts. Yes, absolutely. So you got to start operating from your experience of who you're being rather than through that concept of who you thought you were when you were a child. Right. See, you you know, we're all children in bigger bodies, older bodies, so we can get hurt easily. But the reality is you're an incredibly accomplished, talented, beautiful woman, period. Thank you. Rather than holding yourself as the new teacher. <laughs> or fortunate to have a boyfriend. Right. Yeah. It's important to have you. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I tell you, you're, the conversation we've had is very interesting to me because, see, most people are trying to fill, fulfill that idea or image or, 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 or template they have of what a cool, beautiful woman or man, depending on the gender and the relationship is supposed to be rather than being themselves. And you're discovering how to be yourself and have that be enough because it's way more than enough. Being yourself is extremely attractive. And it's authentic and it's that you're it's you, you're the original, rather than trying to be a copy of what a child said was beautiful or cool. Wow. I feel I feel like I haven't said much, but you guys have pulled out so much of just so much that feels so relevant and what I've been wrestling with private privately. So I thought <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, that goes back to what we we're saying. Like you know, that shy I could say, could you do me a favor and he's like yes i'll take it downstairs about this easel uh it, and the word easel never got out of her mouth no so it, it's like so you you know you fortunately you're an open book which mm. makes it so much easier to have a relationship that works oh i love that that's really cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so yes. much. Really treat being with you today. Likewise. Thank you. It's time for our listener feedback spotlight. Okay, so here we go. We're going to hear from one of our listeners about how transformation has impacted her life or his life. Let's see. Yeah. And if you'd like to learn more about what we're up to, come, you know, you could register for any of our upcoming virtual courses or sign up for our newsletter. Just visit transformationmadeeasy.com. It really is easy. It is easy if you know the way. This is Cheryl in Hong Kong. I really love transformation um, and attending the Living Made Easy seminars. For me in Hong Kong, um, one of the two seminar weekly seminars occurs on my Tuesday early mornings. So for me, it's just a great way to start my day feeling a little bit more at ease um, in touch with what's going on around me and just... Um, yeah, easing into the day and into my life. Do you want to have well-being with consistency? Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Aaron and Shire's lively interactive Living Made Easy virtual seminars. 
Join any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. Next Living Made Easy seminar is Monday and then the following Saturday. And just a reminder, the Costa Rica early registration deadline is coming up on May 1st. So if you're coming with us to Costa Rica in 2025 for either of our instantaneous transformation adventures there or for both, because you can come for one or two weeks. Uh, if you want to get the discount, get your first one third uh, fee in. Uh, by May 1st. Just one little word about that whole Costa Rican thing. What? Nobody's going to try to enroll you into Costa Rica. Mm. That's nobody. Nobody will do anything to get you to be there. You have to choose to be there on your own. Would love to have you. But and... it's really up to you. It's a self-select type of thing it, 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 because it runs so much more smoothly when people are fully, fully invested. Exactly. Kind of like relationship. Absolutely like relationship. Speaking of relationship, in June, on the 8th and 9th, we are having... A weekend. It's virtual. And it's called Magical Relationships. You're invited Exactly. Our next in-person course is in New Jersey at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. We are doing the course Creativity and Intuition, August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And likewise, you're invited. If you want to find out more or register for anything, just go to our website. TransformationMadeEasy.com. Com. Let's take our next guest. Okay. All right, Julie, welcome to being here. Tell people where you're zooming in from. Hi, I'm in Yonkers, New York. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Um, you know, listening to this call, I already feel more relaxed than I did this morning. Mm. Um, I, I really want to believe that I'm not manipulatable. Um, <laughs> Oh, you're totally manipulatable. We're all manipulatable. If we yeah. were not manipulatable, there would never be advertisements. There wouldn't be billboards. We're manipulatable. Okay. So you don't want to be manipulatable. manipulatable. I'm okay. sorry I laughed. But okay. Yeah. It is persist oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's, yeah, it's true. I, I was feeling off this morning. Um, and I, I was feeling off even last night. I, I just... I just feel like I, I was in a really great mood a few days ago and um, just was really in sync with my husband, Sathya. Um, we were just, you know, just having fun, like just celebrating. I have a lot of anniversaries for our dog. We were celebrating one of the many anniversaries I have for our dog um, and just like kind of having fun. Um, and I, I just... You know, we we went out to a concert with a couple that we know, and they're like really lovely people. We went out to dinner. We saw a really terrific concert, um, and I just noticed that during the concert, there was a gentleman near our seats who was very exuberant um, and was like kind of like doing like a lot of like woo like during the show, which is a normal thing to do during the concert, but he did it like pretty much constantly. And I noticed that myself and the woman that we were with just like started looking at each other, like kind of like rolling our eyes. Um, and I just, I, I don't know, like I, I noticed that and I was like, okay, this is happening. Get over it. He's in a concert. This is normal behavior in a concert. Um, but I, yeah. It, it's it, too it, good. It, it's very good. See, first off, it was a man. Mm -hmm. And then your relationship with your husband, who's also a man, deteriorated in the next 24 to 48 hours. Sounds right. You got the virus, the eye roll virus. <laughs> the eye, you know, like <laughs> if, if a world woman that was doing it, you'd probably have rolled your eyes also. But it's a different type of thing. You know, you, you know, it's like it's like a virus. And not only that, 
you mentioned that you're with another couple. And it's so easy if the other couple is pretending to have everything in order, under control, everything's working great. Well, maybe it's not if they have to prove it. And I'd be willing to bet that there's stuff going on there that becomes apparent in your experience, not as a thought, but suddenly you're not as in sync with each other as you were before this concert, before this evening together. Yes, that is exactly what happened. And, and you don't want to see it because you like these people. Yes. And the moral of the story is not stay away from these people. It's discover how to regain your center. Mm. Because, look, life is going to knock you off. That's what life does. It shows up in so many different ways that you don't expect. Yeah. And I, I think that, um, oh, you're going to say something else? Well, and that you don't prefer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing is, I, I really didn't want to believe because I, I really felt like they just seemed so nice together that I didn't want to believe that that was the reason that nothing, you know, it just felt like last night and this morning, like everything between us was just a little bit less synced, like just a little, like everything was a little more difficult than it needed to be. Well. Um, it, you not only synchronized and synchronized with this other couple, you resisted this fellow. And mm. I found that sometimes what you resist, you turn into. So clearly, if he's going woo and enjoying himself. For you, the you became a complaint about his behavior. But also, it, my feeling is. Yes, he was having a great time. He's woohooing the whole concert, but he was clearly unaware of how he impacted the people around him. It was he, it wasn't relevant. He was there for him. I don't know if he's with people if they enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it. But which when, state was this in? New Jersey. Okay, so he was probably high. Hmm. Because marijuana is legal in New Jersey, you see. That's why I asked what state. But the, as soon as you started saying he behaved this way throughout the whole concert, I thought, oh, drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you resist him and you get slightly, you know, a person on drugs is slightly out of sync with true reality because it, it acts as a buffer. And. The thing is, have you have you spoken to Sadia yet? Said, wow, you know, I don't know what happened, but I feel slightly out of sync with you. No, because I, I don't even think I fully realized it until just this morning because I was blaming other reasons. <laughs> um, and I will talk with him. And it, you may not need to. It may mm. be by the time you see each other again. You'll be back in sync. And then it'll be old news. Mm -hmm. Working on what happened in the past really is a, a doesn't work very well because you can't do anything about it. Yeah. Look, if you're upset and you make a resolution to not be upset anymore, Excuse me. does that work? Nope. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So working on what and, and then making working on making resolutions about to be different. And I'm not going to do that again and all that stuff. That's irrelevant because it doesn't change the past at all. What it does is it influences how you behave in the current moment. Mm -hmm. And if it's based on the past, then it's a repeat of the past. So, you, you, you know, it's about much better to let things go and move on to what's right in front of you right now, because this is where your life is taking place. Right. You know, I, the other thing, I, I, I have a feeling it just never occurred to you. The concert itself is almost a life-threatening event. event. You know, there's so many things that happen in public places. You it's hear upsetting. about it. Well, not only that, these days, you go to a public place, and there's a good possibility you're going to die just well, by getting shot. 
I mean, it may it, not be a good possibility, but it is a, a possibility that well, runs in the background it, of people's minds. They said oh. two days ago on the radio or television that uh, uh, in the first 45 days of this new year, uh, in, the were, United in States, the United States, there were 48 mass sh- shootings. Well, so, I mean, it's it's an everyday occurrence. It's like being in a car accident. But I, I, I also think our bodies, you know, we set aside our survival things to go into a large gathering with people. And then there's the sound that hits us in concert is louder than what. So even though we're enjoying it, there's also that fight or flight thing that can get activated and as long as you're aware of it it's like oh you know this is this is loud or and this fellow whilst it was a endorsement of what was happening it still shook your system so somewhere in there i wouldn't be surprised if you circled your own personal wagons to to protect yourself and you haven't quite let go of that protection yet that feels so accurate because Um, yeah, because I I realized like the screaming and shouting was also during more quiet moments of the music, like when maybe there was a very subtle guitar solo or something like that, you know, that, and I, I really see that in a concert, like it doesn't feel comfortable. It feels like, like, I don't think I've really ever enjoyed settings like that, (laughs) but I like music. (laughs) I don't believe you could turn to the guy and say, could you stop, please? So, yeah, it would have been offensive. So then you have to manage yourself and it's, yeah. Yeah. And what you resist runs your life. So a lot of your concert was resisting this guy's noise. So that's where your concert was in opposition to that, not in listening to the music. And again, the moral of the story is not don't go to a concert. It's just about including the possibility of recognizing you're going to be in an uncontrollable situation with a lot of people Mm -hmm. and that it has an impact on your body. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Cool. Thank you, guys. A happy anniversary of whatever with your dog. I love your dog. Yes. Oh, thank you. He, he, he is very a very sweet being. Yes. He is a very, very sweet being. So he's thank a, you. I, I love it when he comes to the Living Made Easies and we get to see him hanging with you. So it's nice. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, he just he just he made just a little bit of an appearance. He's like, oh, you're, you're talking, you're talking about me. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for being with us yes. today. Thank you so much. Really a treat. Hey, subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our newsletter. There's great blogs. There's a kitten chronicle that we release uh, about our cat baby. It's kind of fun. It's been something we've been doing since we first got her. And she's no longer a kitten. No, she's no longer a kitten. She's a full-blown cat. And uh information about the courses. Um, it's, it's just a wealth of information. So you can find all our courses, sign up for the newsletter at transformationmadeeasy.com. Hey, come to a weekend seminar. Have your life transformed. Why not? You know, we, we talk about transformation like concept. It's not. It is a phenomenon that can happen in your life with the situations that you've been putting up with and trying to change clear up just on their own, just as a result of you being in the current moment of your life. Hey, it's cool. You know, and clearly Zoe and Julie are these amazing, amazing individuals. They don't come to our seminars. They because they're broken or need help. But like today, little nuances of things you see about yourself can have things be expansive as opposed to having to have rough days or tough days or things that you have to withhold from your partner. You're invited. I hope you take up the invitation. Yeah. Next week's episode is Night Loops. 
you know, those things that were playing your head at night. Mm. Mm. We'll be talking about that. We'll be back next week. So come on back. And don't miss being here. Yep. 